That Which just... people would know that if they read their Bible instead of thumping it. Hi guys, welcome to the first episode of Just the Tips of 2015. Joining me, I have bisexuality and religion expert, Elio Cruz. We've, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, you, I'd consider you an expert, expert. both of you. I think that's when you're like 50 years old and you've done it for such a long time. I'd say you're more knowledgeable about both subjects than most. Fun fact, he's also the first person to blog my bisexuality, he's like the, ha the whole reason my bisexuality went viral. I'm your unofficial. PR, like your publicist. You really are though. <laughs> so fitting with uh, the sub, the, his areas of expertise, I'm actually very excited about the question that we have. It's one I've been wanting to answer, but it's one that I, I felt like I hadn't had a sufficient expert. Expert, I keep like, love that. So Anonymous asks, so I've recently come to terms with my sexuality, which is good, I guess, but I'm also a Christian and I can't help but feel like can, I can only have one or the other. It just feels like I can have a relationship with God or a relationship with a guy and not both. You are a Seventh-day Adventist. Yes, I am. And you are openly bisexual. I'm openly bisexual. I think it's safe to say that you disagree with- I do disagree. <laughs> this happens all the time. People ask this question all the time. Ever since my four years of writing religion. So there's a big misconception that you can't be gay or queer or bi or whatever and religious as well. You disagreeing with Six verses in the Bible makes it seem that you can't agree with anything else in the Bible. So you right? counted six. Specifically talking about same sex sex, a specific. And half and like half of those are in the old like over half are in the old testament. Yeah, there's right? okay, yeah. The majority are in the old testament. And you also use the um, the model of Eden of Adam and Eve, of course. But not Adam and Steve. Not Adam and Steve. Uh, <laughs> Somehow if you disagree with those six verses that you can't be a religious person and you throw out the rest of the Bible, it's just ludicrous. The Bible's been used to justify so many different things throughout the years. It just seems like it's impossible to take one interpretation of it that's correct. I am a Christian for a lot of reasons, right. and same-sex sex is not one of the fundamentals of my Christianity. I care more about God's creation, God's power, his um, death on the cross. Those are the, like the big, like, overarching theological themes that make me appreciate yeah. the Bible and religion. When I was uh, active in the Catholic Church, I know that they would use this line all the time of like, you have to accept it all, you can't just pick yeah. and choose, and you can't be cafeteria Catholic is yeah. what is no, the term. True. But like, if you look at the Christians in the same denomination, like take my denomination, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Which is pretty... It's, yeah, it's really conservative. <laughs> when you start getting to the nitty gritty of what people really believe, on like the small stuff, like I worship on Saturday, the Jewish mm -hmm. Sabbath, Right. But it's all these different little things that aren't defining matters that people say oh if you actually are worshiping on the Saturday Sunday you're no longer a Christian all of a sudden if you're like hey I'm gay they're like oh you're obviously not a Christian it's like it doesn't make sense for Th that's the one that's, that's the defining the question breaker. your sexuality doesn't define your entire existence there's a lot of LGBT people who leave the church not because they're no longer believing, but because of they the environment. They get out. Buy into this idea that that is the question for you to be a Christian yeah. or not. But there's a huge uh, Christian following of queer folk. You have yeah. the Gay Christian Network Conference, which I'm going to this week. There's over 1,400 participants coming this year from all different denominations. So it is possible. It is possible to eat do the it. Cake a lot and of have us. faith too. I mean, I do it every day, and I I write about it to try to get people to understand a little bit more on all sides of the conversation. Mm. I think something that, that is really worth mentioning too is that like I really really the only passage that I know of that explicitly say that you know same sex relations are bad it's in the Old Testament yeah. which this is now this is my old religion teachings coming back the whole point of Jesus dying on the cross it was forming the new covenant. So everything in the old covenant was kind of like, eh, you don't really have to do that anymore. Yeah, there's some really great books coming out right now to talk about affirming theology. Yeah. You have Matthew Vines' book, God and the Gay Christian, who just came out. There's also an amazing book by James Brownson called Gender, Sexuality, and the Bible. There's, it's out there, it's just not as loud as the, yeah. the homophobic Christians. Uh, the Pope, Pope's uh, yes. shift in- Yes, gotta like the new Pope. The yeah, Pope really is great. great. And other denominations are coming around and having conversations um, in a little bit more of a, uh, civil and mm -hmm. Christ-like manner, so I think it's a new day in the church. It's possible to be queer and Christian and um, love God and love your girlfriend, boyfriend. If you're made this way, then why would that be a bad thing? You yeah, know? God doesn't make mistakes. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. I think it's also just important to remember in general, not just with religion, but with any kind of ideology, it's just very important to always be asking the question of, is this making my life better or is it making it worse? If you find that following religion or, or, or anything for that matter, that just 
is causing more harm in your life than it is good, then I think it's just time to reevaluate. It should. It should be a affirming thing for you. You should be able to yeah. read the Bible, see that you're a reflection of Christ's creation, and be affirmed by that. Anything that kind of uses shame and, and ridicule as a teaching tool is just It becomes bad. a little bit, yeah. Yeah, that's just not something you should do, period. And that happens in, you know, and that happens in secular groups as well. It's just Exactly. I'd say that some almost secular groups can be even worse about that. Getting back to also with like your own personal experience, I mean, have you kind of, I'm sure, had to grapple with your own kind of feelings of shame? My entire life. I've, okay. I grew up in, I've only gone to Christian private schools. I'm like, I currently go to a Christian university. So, um, it's... Woo! <laughs> Glutton for punishment, <laughs> man. Masochist. I know, right? There was a huge moment for me that I think a lot of Christians, straight, gay, doesn't matter, it needs to come to terms with that what the church says to you isn't direct words from God. Right. So you have religious leaders who are flawed, just like us human beings, um, and they're meant to guide us as much as they can, but they mess up sometimes. So when you hear these things from church pastors and leaders and stuff, it sucks. Like yeah. I've had pastors look at my hand, I'll just shake them, and like walk away from me in public. Whoa. Like, it was, like I've had some How really, Christ-like. Yeah, that, yeah, that doesn't affect my relationship with Christ. Like that, like you can't tell me what God thinks about me when I'm talking to him every day. Yeah, that that's true. That, Obviously you can't hear one perspective and accept that as like the only perspective. Yeah, it's just important to have your own relationship with Christ and make sure that you believe because you actually believe or not because someone, someone tells, tells you, you to. Quite, it's okay to question your faith yeah. and to seek alternate answers because that's the whole path towards a deepened faith. Which is funny because a lot of denominations are practically against questioning. Like you can't, you have to stay in line. Which is but, counterintuitive. Yeah, but, yeah. but in order for any academic sense, and it, unless you're questioning, you're not growing. Your relationship with God or whatever, or whoever or whatever it may be out there is your business. And find, I think if you're, if you are wanting to believe, find a group of people that can affirm you and be in that group. And there's plenty out there. Um, Even if it's not within your yeah. geographical location, this Online, why we have yeah. the internet. <laughs> so now, plug your shit. This is this is the part. Okay, plug where can shit. where can people <laughs> find you online? Twitter at uh, Eliel Cruz. That's E L I E L C R U Z. It'll be a link in the description. Uh, Facebook.com/slash Eliel Cruz writes. I write about my sexuality and religion and pretty much anything else my editors will allow me to. If you have any other questions that you'd like me and future guests to answer, you can leave them in the comments below. You can tweet them at me with the hashtag just the tips, or you can submit them on Tumblr. Give it to me any way you like. And uh, <laughs> thanks so much for joining me, Eliel. Um, keep your eyes peeled uh, for another video coming soon. Until then, have fun and stay safe out there, kids. <laughs>